This is a synth. Now when you come to a synth, it's to photograph the big vista. Spectacular mountains, beautiful locks, you know the deal. However, this trip was a little different. What happened over the first four or five days of this trip meant that all my best laid plans went completely out the window. But in the end, I was really happy for that to be the case. This trip ended up being not only one of my most productive, but one of the most enjoyable photography trips that I've ever had. I hope you can join me. Right folks, welcome to Ascent. I need to get my head in the game here because I tried to film this intro a second ago and I just really wasn't concentrating. The conditions this morning are brilliant. Uh, a lot better than I thought they were going to be, to be honest. Uh, we're on day two. I didn't do any filming yesterday because really it wasn't that interesting. Uh, we did shoot a little bit at some locks with some nice reflections. Um, I should say I'm out with Dem again. Uh, there's four of us on this trip up in Ascent this week and yeah, looks pretty good to be honest. The, the weather forecast for cold weather is promising. Um, come out this morning again and we've got another hoar frost. Uh, we seem to be magnets for hoar frost at the minute um, but it's uh, it's really nice and um, we've just pulled over the side of the road I think this is going to be another one of these days where just sort of driving around trying to find compositions as we go along we're just chasing the mist up the road basically and uh, we've pulled over here and we've got the 100 400s on and we're just waiting for the mist to sort of thin out a little bit as is typical with a lot of this stuff, as you're driving along, you spot a composition and it looks amazing. And then as soon as you get set up, it disappears. Uh, and in this case, the mist has got really thick. So I'm just gonna hang around here for a minute and just see if this mist thickens up, uh, mist thickens up, mist thins out. And then we can get the shot that we'd plan to uh, take. It's a set of trees at the other side of the lock here, nice spindly looking trees just poking out of the mist. So uh, yeah, let's let's see if that pans out. Right, we've had to scrap that last plan off temporarily because we hung around for about 45 minutes and the mist just would not clear. Uh, I got some fantastic drone footage there, very interesting. Um, some bits of a, a fog bow that were in the shot there and also a Brock and Spectre. Um, just amazing to, to watch, but no photos, sadly. So we're just driving up and down this road again, just trying to see if we can find something else. Um, it's not looking that promising because we, we seem to be driving through a lot of coniferous woodland rather than any kind of interesting deciduous stuff. But we are gonna persevere and see if we can find something. But if not, I think plan B will be to head back up the road to that lock and see if the mist is cleared a bit. Um, might just be one of these days where we're just kind of chasing our tail a bit, but that's the joy of landscape photography. Okay, right, I think we've, have we hit the da the spot? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, the spit, spit, <laughs> spit it out. <laughs> have we hit the jackpot, Dem? Uh, have we or not? I think we might just have. All right, we might have hit the jackpot, I don't know. Um, yeah, let's just get it on face track in just a sec. Yeah, I think we've, I think we've found a spot that's worth shooting anyway. Maybe not the jackpot. I don't know yet, but uh, I've got set up for a shot here, which uh, I think fits my eye quite nicely. Trees sort of crisscrossing over each other. We're on quite a steep, well, steep, steepish slope here, 
and we're just on the fringes of where this fog is coming into the woods which is nice which is really what you should always try and aim for when you're shooting woodland I think you don't want to be right in the thick of it you just want to be on the fringes of it where the light can get in um, but this composition uh, about 60 millimeter I've got a case black mist filter on the front uh, very kindly sent to me by case we'll have to see if it has any effect here this is where it should have a bit of an effect softening some of the highlights um, but yeah lovely little scene this uh, nice mossy bits of the branches and then we've got these beardy looking trees that we had on the last video in Glen Affric. Um yeah all in all pretty decent comp to start with so I'm gonna take this one and then have a little look at something else Right folks, as a, an added bonus, uh, we're going to look at what well, Dem's shooting here, so I'll just turn you around just a sec. Hey folks, so welcome to what looks like a pretty magical wood, certainly in these conditions. And um, there's a lot of crisscrossing going on, but there's a bit of a corridor through. Um, if you can see these, the nearest trees to me create quite a nice kind of V that mm. pulls you into the distance and then in the middle behind it there's a bit of a an S S shaped tree I think kind of central to the frame um, but I need to portrait pano it at about I'm shooting at 70 millimeters just to bring that tree in the middle a bit closer and it'll probably be three vertical frames times three <laughs> to, to give me a, a square crop probably but if I did that at kind of 35 mil just the depth wouldn't work so yeah um, if it works out Stu will pop it on screen and um, yeah hopefully it comes out well <laughs> Right, start again. I'll film this again because the clamp arm that the uh, Pocket 3 is stood on here nearly came off the tripod there, so that wouldn't have been very good. Right, shot number two. Uh, I'm a bit happier with this shot. Same sort of focal length, a bit, again, about 60 millimeter. Uh, the black mist filter is really having a nice effect here. What I'm seeing on the camera versus what I'm seeing with my eyes, it's definitely softening the highlights, which is, which is really working here. Um, what else is there to say here really? I mean, one of the, the key uh, issues I had there was I just needed to move a little bit further left to separate one of the prominent branches on the main tree that's hanging down from the trunk. I uh, just wanted to get those apart from each other. Um, but aside from that, not much, not much else to say really. Um, this mist sort of keeps coming and going. It's hard to tell whether it's thinning out or or not i keep thinking it is but then i'm looking at the shots on the camera and they all look fine so there you go so yeah here's shot number two Okay, I thought we were going to be finished for the session there, but uh, as we've worked our way down the slope, uh, the mist's rolled back in, and uh, sorry, Dem's just shouting at me. What are you saying? Dem says nice. <laughs> um, yeah, we've just worked our way down the slope a bit further, and the, and the mist's come back in, so a lot more compositions are, are starting to open up. Um, this one here I think might be the strongest one 
that I've shot in this little session. Um, again, about 40 millimeters, something like that. I'm shooting at about f11 just to give me a decent depth of field, but I don't want the back end to be too sharp. Um, so this this is working out quite nicely. Again, black mist filter on, which is really working nicely with this light. And uh, yeah, I think we'll just carry on here because uh, we were going to finish up, but. Um, We've got down to this bottom section and uh, there's a bit more stuff to work with. What, what's it like over there? There's one good pump there. Um, it's just coming and going. It's good. It's another kind of tunnel one. Apparently there's a good comp over there. I don't want to go and shoot Dem's composition though, so I think I'll probably leave that one. But uh, anyway, if this is any good, here it is. All right, I was going to just show you a bit of a montage of some of the images that I took for the rest of this little bit of the shoot, um, but it would be a shame not to film this a little bit because uh, this little scene that I've picked out here, it looks absolutely epic in the back of the camera, to be honest, but I could end up with egg on my face here and looking a bit silly if it doesn't quite turn out how I'm visualizing it here in the field anyway, but it would be worth, uh, well, it's worth filming it and just to show you what I'm looking at. So, a bit further in this time, most of the shots that I've been taking today have been between sort of 40 and 60 millimeter. Uh, this one's at about 110, really suits zooming in and compressing the scene a bit. And it's just the kind of bottom third of this little area that I'm shooting that is of interest to me. Uh, we've got this lovely sort of curvy tree in the foreground, lots of lichen and moss on it and then a fallen one to the left of it and then just through the gap where the light is getting through we've got three spindly trees uh, in the middle so I was just trying to sort of figure out the composition where those three trees would would act as a nice backdrop uh, it's been a little bit fiddly sorting this one out but um, it looks it looks good in the back of the camera anyway that's all I'll say but uh, Anyway, I know this section of the video has been a bit woodland heavy, so uh, I'll stick this one on the screen and I'll join you in the second part where hopefully it's a bit less woodland heavy. So it was at this point that I decided to put the vlogging camera down over the next couple of days and focus purely on the photography. I was acutely aware that I might not get these conditions again and didn't want any distractions. This shot here of the frozen lock was one that I'd had my eye on for a little while. Unfortunately, everything came together with some lovely mist drifting across the mid-ground with the dominating sullen in the distance. After sunrise we moved further 
along the roads where we were greeted to even more hoarfrost and just the most amazing light that I've ever witnessed to be honest. It was almost like standing in an infrared scene. Life on the ragged edge. <laughs> <laughs> the glow from the rising sun behind the mist and then this amazing blue light coming off the hoarfrost was just quite something else and probably something that I might not see ever again. But it's like, you know, it's like powder. Look at that. The tip of it is... Incredible. That is incredible. I tell you what, nature never ever fails to amaze me when you see stuff like this. <laughs> so when we went further down the road into more and more epic conditions. Myself and Greg really didn't quite know where to point the camera to be honest at this point. Uh, I managed to grab a couple more shots where once again the light was just unbelievable. I wasn't going to film this, but it would be too good not to. Myself and Greg have just been driving along this road for a little bit and we've come to a lock that Greg shot yesterday and it's completely frozen over and it is just unbelievable. You can do photography all your life, I would say, and probably not see something like this. Um, I'm going to try and concentrate here and get the shot that I've planned. Uh, we've been standing here for about half an hour and there's a lovely little set of trees on a little island um, about in the middle of the lock here and we've just been very patiently waiting for this little bit of light to come across into the shot it's really slowly moving across we're absolutely praying that it's going to line up behind this little island here now I've taken a few shots already with a little bit of glow behind it which ordinarily would be brilliant on their own but if we can just get this bit of glow behind it it'll just absolutely finish it off um yeah i don't know what to say really it's it's just just unbelievable <laughs> i wanted to get the drone up here actually because uh you know the drone video on this would be amazing as well but yesterday i had the drone up and the propellers were actually freezing as soon as it was going up into the mist um, I was getting the motor overload warning and it was basically just going to drop out of the sky so at the minute I daren't put the drone up even though I would love to um, and I'm just going to concentrate on this shot uh, I'll check back in with you in a minute where hopefully this light will have moved across Right, we're gonna call it there, I think. It was so close to being absolutely perfect, but it's just not quite there. We thought the mist was moving kind of laterally along the lake, but in actual fact, it looks like it's moving over diagonally. And the nice patch of light that I showed you in that bit of B-roll, it's not gonna quite reach the main subject that I'm, that I'm looking at. I did get a couple earlier, that are still really nice but it's one of those where you've seen the potential in it and you think oh god it, it could have been a little better but um anyway i'll put a couple of these on the screen because they're still worth showing and uh we're going to move a bit further down the lock and see if we can grab something before sunset we've got an, about an hour and a half left and it's still pretty epic at the moment so we're going to crack on
So as we descended further down the valley and out of the mist, the shooting opportunities dried up a little. Now we did manage to get one more shoot in, this from a lovely viewpoint that Greg had actually scoped out a couple of days earlier, looking towards this secluded lock and then some rather gorgeous alpenglow going off behind the mountains in the distance. This was a lovely way to finish what was a truly amazing day of photography and one I certainly won't forget in a hurry. Mm -hmm.